just say. Anyway, when you're doing a when you're doing a picture, your picture plane, you can imagine if you imagine taking a nail and driving it right through the center of your canvas or your drawing or whatever, and putting a nail through it, and then you start putting different things on it. You want it to balance. So you could put a uh, a big thing here, for example, but you could put a, a little thing here, and still make it visually like it would balance. And again, the value and the color and all of that is are variables because in terms of visual way, a, a brighter, lighter, warmer object has more visual weight or gravitas to it than a dark or cool color. And so, a um, again, like a This right here, you're not really, there's, it's kind of ghostly and soft back here, and your eyes tend to look, the, the warms and the lights tend to come forward, and you look at those. Also, um, there's a lot of, um, speaking of like talking about um, theater and that sort of thing, that's kind of what you have, is you've got like a main actor here, and all of these are the center of interest. You've got to think, what is going to be the center of interest in my picture, my focal point? <clears throat> and even if you say, okay, well, I want it to be, uh, I want it to be flower, I want it, a, a floral, for example. But where at, even specifically in that floral, is going to be the center of interest? You need to, you need to know that, because otherwise you'll have one. It might not be where you want people to look, but you, yeah. Do so do you start with the center of your canvas when you paint? No, no, I just, uh, no, I, mean, I just work out the, work I mean, out like, the, when we do photography, they teach us thirds, mm -hmm. you know, to, to right. break things up in thirds. And that's a, that's so, a good way, so, I think. I mean, yours all seem to have a center. I, um, I tend to use what's called the golden ratio, or phi, uh, sometimes called the, uh, the uh, golden spiral and all of this, um, because I think it's better. I think it's 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 not exactly the like. Uh, for example, if I remember correctly, this is divided this way and this way with the formula of phi or the golden ratio. Um, phi, the what is it? The fifteenth letter of the Greek alphabet. I can't remember. Looks sort of like that. And phi is 1.618 dot 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 two um do it this way two zero point six one eight dot dot dot. So throughout nature this pattern is everywhere from micro to macro, from your fingerprints, your the proportions of your hand, your uh, your teeth, your whole anatomy, so uh, an embryo, and you know, yeah spiral galaxy on and on and on and so it's it's written into the code of reality I mean, and it's the uh, a lot of things that products even that you purchase uh, your credit card is not that shaped by accident because certain proportions are more pleasing to us and this is the most pleasing proportion to, to the human eye and so if we do if we deal with that linearly yeah Tom Cruise has a perfect face yeah yeah, I read an article about it. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Tom mm -hmm. Cruise's face, the way his eyes and nose and all that stuff it, it does the it's a okay. they call it the magic formula or magic ratio or whatever mm -hmm. related, mm -hmm. related to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, so now you know. Yeah, like the way uh, there are some I, other I, actors that have it too. I just remember this yeah, one, sure. Tom Cruise. I uh, I haven't heard ever heard anyone deal with this. Uh, the Greeks use this, and a lot of people have used pi and pi. Uh, this this one may be called, end up being called pi o'clock. I don't know. You'll, you might notice it's three fourteen, uh, which is which is a whole a fascination of mine too. Is pi uh, both infinite uh, numbers and, and patterns that, that we see in, in nature, uh, nature and that sort of thing. But I even uh, in my Bible studies and things like that take this into the theological realm. Uh, yeah, for example, 
the uh, I believe the golden ratio is also the golden rule that these things are mathematically precise uh, certain uh, a lot of these theological ideas as well as uh, the things that you see in nature like I said that we see everywhere uh, the, even the stock market different types of organic patterns and things like that uh, you can look at there's a movie yeah, that came chaos out. theory yeah chaos theory is that chaos oh, okay. results in order eventually. Yeah, right yeah you know Yep. Um, it just appears messy for a period of time. That's all. Mm -hmm. One of the, the things that I use, like, uh, was well, mentioning, like, uh, the idea of a uh, center of interest in the main actor. Like, if this were a, if this were theater, and it is sort of, um, that obviously this is the main actor, but and then specifically on him, you're going to tend to 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 look right here at this little white spot and the ear and all this stuff guides you through the, the picture and you've got these little like breadcrumbs that cause your eyes to jump around notice the crayon here it's like a pointer telling you to to look up here at this center of interest and even these these lines that are sort of subdued in the background they lead you in that direction too, or this one. I mean, he helps. He helps to direct you up toward that way as well. And by the way, you know, we can see like this one is has got a lot of diagonals. This has got a lot of diagonals in it. Diagonals evoke feelings of peace and tranquility. If you want something to like, if you're horizontal. I'm sorry, horizontal lines, not diagonals. <laughs> no, diagonals lines won't do that. Opposite curves and horizontal lines. You know, the horizontal format and horizontal patterns are going to create these feelings of harmony and peace and tranquility and that sort of thing. Verticals evoke feelings of strength and power and authority. So like uh, if you think about uh, cathedrals, courthouses, these big tall columns and this kind of stuff, uh, it, it's going to do psychologically, it's going to have that effect. And I've talked about it before without going into uh, to a lot of detail on it, but there's a whole area of color psychology that we're affected psychologically on an unconscious level when we see colors. Like uh, red is a good example because, like, red is the first color you notice. If, if you're looking, if you're just kind of looking, your eyes automatically go to, especially a bright red, something. So if you're needing to stop lights and stuff like that <clears throat> you need to get people's attention you know red is the color to use or uh, the law enforcement that uses that you notice the red red light and you, you know get your attention but it's a it's a color that excites and excites appetites and so uh, movie theaters if you go in a movie theater almost all of them that I know of are red everywhere you're bombarded with the color red that increases your heart rate and your metabolism and makes you hungry, you're more likely to be hungry and you're more likely to eat more. Um, red light districts. Uh, Rochester University, I remember, did a study with all of these men and it was, they, they showed them a picture of the same woman in different colored clothes. And it was the same poles and same woman and everything, but overwhelmingly they selected the red the red clothes, the woman in the red clothes as more attractive, I mean like by a high majority. And uh, blue is just the opposite. Blue's, uh, red is the warmest color, red, blue is the coolest color. Blue is an appetite suppressant. And so if you're trying to lose weight, um, you would, uh, it's a good idea maybe use uh, blue dishes because most things that are blue are poison, blueberries being an exception. But most things, studies show that people do better on test in a blue or indigo colored room. It's interesting, uh, theologically, uh, if those of you are, that are aware of it, like uh, probably everybody's aware of the story of uh, the little lady with the issue of blood for 12 years that touched the hem of the Messiah. She thought, if I can touch his hem, I'll, I'll be healed. So as Westerners, we with our Western lenses, we picture this as meaning him, but 
this is what uh, she was talking about, which is called Titi, or uh, uh, the fringe. Uh, and that's from uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 15, among other places. But the children of Israel were told to put fringe, or titi, on the corners of their garments throughout their generations, uh, in, including a thread of blue. And they were told to look at that blue thread to remember all the commandments of God. So basically the blue, and specifically this uh, tekla blue, um, made from, from the murex shell, has a focusing and calming, it calms appetites and enables you to focus. And so all of these things actually, it's a, arguments that occur, uh, occur more often in yellow rooms. The prisons are normally yellow. Probably, probably going to be more of a subdued, you know, yeah. from what I've seen you know, uh, going in there. Yeah. And, but uh, so, yeah, I mean, all of those things are, are important to think about in crafting a picture to evoke the type of mood that you're wanting. And, and one thing I think is supremely important that I never really, I wasn't ever taught in, um, in college, nobody ever mentioned anything about it and I, I never hear anybody talk about it, is uh, edge quality. They don't really, that's, that's an, line is one of the elements of art, and, but there should be a vast spectrum from your hardest edge to your softest edge. And again, this isn't just true when we're talking about visual art, it's true in everything. If you, if you really begin to notice it and thinking about, think about it, um, a good singer knows this, a good guitar player knows this. It's boring to hear a guitar ding, 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 the same level, same volume, and you want to, when you're playing uh, an instrument even, like a guitar solo, not that I'm, not that I'm any good, but... Yes. No, I'm not very good, really. I'm, but I'm fascinated with it, and I, the theory interests me because it all connects. Uh, what is true in, you'll notice even a lot of the, thank you. A lot of the, uh, the language and the terminology that is associated with music is also true in, in art. And so if we're talking about a chord, like three, three notes make a chord. Um, you've got three primary colors. You've got uh, three primaries, thank you, and three notes make a chord. Of course, you know in the visual spectrum, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, green, green blue, and violet, you have seven colors, and then, like it, like notes in a scale, you have seven notes, and the next, the eighth, is the new octave that starts back over again, and it's the same kind of principles over and over. In in sound, sound and light are a whole lot, lot the same thing. I think it may be the same thing, personally, that is that behaves differently. In different in different ways but I think it might be kind of the same thing in the beginning was the word and the word was the light the sound was the light um, and we actually see the the light and the sound bring everything into to order into out of, out of chaos in, into an order um, so you've got um, warms and cools in in paint in in sound you or in music you have uh, sharps and flats or you've got majors and minors, lows and highs, bright and dark. And you hear those terms in, in music like a very bright note, very bright chord, a dark chord. It's the same kind of language and concepts because it evokes a similar type of, of feeling. A song, if you haven't ever heard it, I know you've all heard Sound of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel, but if you want to see, in my opinion, a masterful example of somebody doing all of this musically it's uh, the cover by um, Disturbed. I highly recommend you check it out because if you can imagine and the video is really pretty 
The band is too. called Disturbed? The band is called Disturbed, and they do a cover of Sound of Silence oh, okay. that is um, <clears throat> pretty incredible. And it's, they're dealing with all of these things. When you think about singing or you think about language even, not to be, uh, not to um, degrade or impugn or disparage any ethnic group or any of the, anything like that, but there are certain languages that are, if people are honest, are, will say the French language, or often, it is a beautiful language. And most people, probably if you, if, if you ask people, what do you think, when, even though you may not understand it, what is the, are the languages that you think are more pretty? What rank the languages that you think are not? And uh, some of the languages are very hard. You have very hard consonants. And some of the languages are much more vowel languages. Same way like in singing. 